What's up, team? It's your biggest fan. I'm just, I'm adjusting the focus here, team. All right, I think I think I got it. I think I got it, team. So the deal is, is I was kicked off of the Uber Eats app because they say I was making fraudulent deliveries. Now I don't want to go too deep into this Uber Eats thing because it's not important. It's a very inconsequential thing. Um, but I wanted to let you guys know what what happened. I got kicked off the Uber Eats app. They say that I was fraudulently delaying orders between my between the restaurant and customers. And this wasn't found by a person. This was found by a machine. And I think it's quite possible that all of the communications that I've had with the Uber Eats team has has been but with the computer. It's it's really quite possible. There's a number I can call for customer support. And that takes you to the main Uber number where you're talking to a human being. But then they say, hey, right, we don't, the Uber Eats team, they don't, they don't answer phones. There's no phone department for, if you drive for Uber Eats, there's nobody to call. And all of my correspondence has been through messages, either emails or in-app messages or text messages. And each time the responses have been almost identical. It's. So I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I, I believe that there is a possibility that that whole system could be run by artificial intelligence, which is which is which is pretty cool. It sucks because I got kicked off the app and I was on the app because I need the money. I got to pay bills. I got to pay rent. I got a wife. I got kids. I got a daughter in college. I'm trying to grow a business. I had a lot of stuff going on over here, team. But I'm making this video because otherwise, if this never had to happen, if they didn't kick me off the app two times, they kicked me off once and I was like devastated. Right? I'm going like, dude, what am I going to do? How am I going to make money? What's the deal? What's the deal? What's the deal, team? Right? I got money coming in, but it's not enough yet. It's just not enough. What am I going to do? And then they activated the app again and I was fine. And I felt this relief. This burden was lifted. I felt free. I could carry on with what I was doing. But for those two days, why I couldn't do anything, my mind was running. It was racing. And... The things that I had been doing, I just doubled down on them. So it's like, hey, if I can't go do these deliveries, then I'll just make twice as many tutorials and upload twice as many videos. I'll put twice as many courses in the startup lab as I was going to do before. I'll just work as hard. I'll work harder on this thing than I ever have before. This thing that I'm doing for me. I've never worked this hard specifically for myself. It's always been me working really hard for somebody else. And then getting kind of what's left over. And even even in this right here, right? Working hard for myself is like making all these videos, posting them to YouTube. YouTube makes all the money. The people making, we don't, the people, us making content, we don't make a lot of money. Some of us do. Some of us do. I think we all can make a ton of money, to be honest. I think there's room for everybody out here. Everybody. The world is a very big place. There's 7 billion people and we're raising more people out of poverty every day. And that takes me to another point, team. We got society here, at least here in America, is, is it's in shambles. It doesn't make any sense right now. We're arguing over politicians. We're, 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 we're fighting about climate change. We're fighting about people crossing the border illegally. Le uh, illegally? What? You know, I've been in conversations with people where they talk about immigration. And I say, no, we're talking about illegal immigration. And they go, well, nobody's illegal. <laughs> and it, no, you're right. Nobody, nobody's illegal. But we have rules. And it's, it's, I'm not here to talk about politics, team. Because politics are inconsequential. It doesn't matter if you're Republican, black, white, blue, green, brown. It doesn't matter. None of that stuff matters, team. What matters is that we all get to live the lives we want to live and be the people we want to be and do the things we want to do without hindering the freedoms of other people. That's the covenant. That's the rule, team. We came here to play a game, and we are smart enough to play this game and have as much fun as we want without crushing other people. And that is, I believe, the ultimate direction of all society, of, of anything ever created, is singularity. It's where all of the different pieces get to come together and coexist, is one but still be individuals. Like every cell in your body, there's trillions of them. No two cells are alike. They're each doing their own thing. They each have their own blueprint. They each have their own job and they just do their job. But us as humans, we are too smart. We come here and we know what we're here for. We know what we want to do. We're sad when we're not doing it. We get depressed. We get angry. We lash out. That's where violence comes from. 
Violence comes from people who cannot figure out how to express all of the energy that they have built up inside of themselves, team. Like you take a little kid. I have I have five kids. And I've seen them all grow up in in various stages. And when a kid when a kid cannot figure out how to express themselves, whether it be like through their words or or through their through their movements, they completely explode. They go, they fall on the floor, they, they, they go nuts, they're screaming, they're crying, it's because they don't know how to control something. Something is not right. And that's our jobs as parents to, to help them through this, help them figure out how to work through those emotions. But most parents are shitty. They don't understand this stuff, myself included. I've never even sat down and thought about this stuff before, team, until this happened. Until after 14 years in the army, Multiple years of software development, no degrees, no degrees team, right? Just going to school, learning, reading books, reading all these self-help books, taking self-help sem seminars and I've, over the years, I've probably, I don't know, it doesn't matter. A lot of money, a lot of money on all this stuff, learning all this stuff. You can see the bookshelves and the crazy computer back here, learning, trying to figure this out. Why are things the way they are? And I think that's been my mission, my calling. If I went any other way, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be here talking to you right now. And this is a point in time where I believe the most people need this kind of conversation. We don't need someone else to save us, team. We don't need politicians. We don't need to elect somebody who's going to go off into Washington and fight the good fight for us. Because they're all full of bullshit. Everybody has their own agenda and everybody should have their own agenda. Everybody should act in their own what is, what is it called? There's a book called um, Atlas Shrugged by Ayn Rand. And for those of you who don't like to read, there's movies. There's like, I think it's a four part, four, four movies. It's called Atlas Shrugged by Ayn Rand. And Ayn Rand is a philosopher. And she, she spoke, or well, she spoke about, because she's not, she's not physically here with us anymore. But she spoke about um, objective self-interest. We should all act in objective self-interest. And this is, check this out, team. So there are some people who believe, they understand exactly what she means. And there are some people who, who, who perceive it as her saying, hey, she's telling us to be selfish. That we should act in our own best interest at all costs. Even if it's to the detriment of the people around us. We should do what's good for us. And because of, because of they have that mindset, they don't believe in her philosophy. But when you really think about it, right? If, if we follow the covenant, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, the golden rule, do unto others as you'd have others do unto you, don't throw stones in glass houses, and um, in, 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 in all of the other sayings that we've heard and we deem kind of positive. The Ten Commandments, the Bible, all this stuff, right? The covenant is telling us how to act towards one another. And we can't. Now this, this whole conversation started out with me talking about getting fired from Uber Eats team. Because I believe everybody, we came here with the purpose. And the reason why I was kicked off of that app two times is because I wasn't fulfilling my purpose. This is the universe telling us. And this happened to you. I know it has. Some of you has happened to you and you haven't realized it yet. But later on you will. And you'll think back to this moment. If you've watched this video up until this point, you'll think back to this moment. And you should just subscribe right now. Because obviously I'm saying something that is appealing to you. And you should go buy a mug too. They're pretty cool. Especially if you, if you want to learn the code, get a mug. If you don't want to learn the code, go, go to therealcasadero.com and get a shirt, team. But seriously though, guys, I would never have made this video if that didn't happen. And this is what, well, this is what I'm here to talk about, right? Like... For all of uh, for for everybody out there who's struggling, and everybody's struggling with something. If you're poor, you have no idea what it's like to be rich. None, right? Unless you've been rich before. But they may have problems bigger than yours, and you don't know. But you you assume that because they have the money, that problems don't matter to them. But they're just a different kind of problem, team. There's some rich people out there that are like, dude. If I could get rid of all this stuff and just live a simple life, I would, but they can't. They got too many people depending on them. You go out, you start a business, you go to, to 300 people, 
and now you got these people depending on you for a paycheck and you don't believe anybody else can run this business and keep it going then you just built yourself a cage and that's what I was doing team I got out the army and I was go I was headed to building myself a cage and I stopped and I said dude I don't want to do this I don't want to build a ca I don't want to live in a box where I'm, I'm responsible for all these people there's a better way to help people right Biz politicians think you help people by giving them stuff you don't help people by giving them stuff you you help people by giving them purpose direction and motivation you you help people by helping them figure out why they came here in the first place nobody came here just to live then die why 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 be born so you could slave away for somebody else and then die team that's what i've been trying to figure out that's what that's what kept me in the army for 14 years and eight months trying to figure out what it means to be a part of an institution and why would somebody go down that path and there's a lot of people there's people who 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 meant to go down that path i was one of those people team i was a good soldier i'm naturally physically fit that was that now when i think back right there was a fork in the road for me one one fork said hey go get rich and i i i, I was well on my way at 16 i was making good money building computers I was being exposed to people who were all about business and were all about money and were all about growing their net worth. I went out on a job when I was 16 years old. I made I made $300. It was it was $329 in two and a half hours working with the guy who owned a computer shop who hired me after I got fired from Office Max. He hired me and he paid me cash under the table, 25 bucks an hour. And I left him to join the army. And I haven't spoke, spoken to him since. I don't know where he is. I don't know if he's alive or dead. But that guy gave me a humongous opportunity. Changed my life. He exposed me to the fact. Him and another guy. There was another guy. George has used computers. I used to go see George on a regular basis. George is probably dead now. But George used to sit in this little computer shop. Surrounded. He had computers from the floor to the ceiling. Old computers. IBMs. X86s. You name it, George had it. He, but he loved computers. That was his thing, man. I don't I have no idea what George's home life was like. But me as a 16-year-old, I could go in there and I could have a conversation with George. And we was, he was happy to talk to me about computers. He changed my life, too. These were two people who were just doing their thing, just living their lives, man. Two gay guys I met. My first job I had at a movie theater. These two gay dudes started this theater. And I'm pretty sure that they did that full time. I met a guy, Jeff Kanyak. We are friends on LinkedIn. And Jeff taught me how to run the lighting systems in the theater. And I think Jeff worked another job and he was working that job part time. But I was young at the time. I didn't understand money the way I do now. I didn't understand why people would work two jobs or why you even had to work two jobs. Which is interesting. Because why don't we learn that in school? Why don't we learn about money? Why don't we learn how to make money? Like really make money. We're taught to just go get a job. And fortunately enough... I made it from the south side of Chicago, from the ghetto, where I spent my time with drug dealers and gangsters, and wannabe gangsters. And we talk about mass shootings and stuff like this. I experienced mass shootings on the south side of Chicago in 1995. There's people experiencing mass shootings in Chicago right now, right now, while I'm recording this video. But nobody talks about that. Because it's... Because like I said before, team, right? I don't know if there's evil people out there, right? I don't know if there's one. I, I don't even know if I talked about that in this video. If there's somebody ruling this all. But look, man, we are focused on the wrong stuff. Me, I'm focused on making money, right? I was focused on this, go out and do this thing for this. I got to make money, of course, right? But what if the money that I want to make comes from me making this video or the next video or the one after that? I don't know which one, so I got to keep making them. And it's the same for you, team. There is something you were sent here to do. Something that you are supremely good at. You might not be the best in the world, but you're better than most. And it comes naturally. You feel comfortable doing it. You feel, you feel free. And then there's probably, you probably have a hobby. Something that you like to do to pass the time. right? Maybe you like to put together puzzles or build stuff. Do yard work whatever right 
And then there's something that you just you're just talented in. Like you can just sit down and you can just do it. Like for, like for me, it was it's been computers, right? And I'm not like a computer genius, just better than most. That's been my talent. And then I've had this obsession with software and software development and personal development and all this stuff. And the thing that I that that comes easy to me is just speaking. And the universe has been pointing me in this direction, and it's been pointing you in this direction too, team. When we moved from Chicago, from the south side of Chicago, from the ghetto, where all the mass shootings are, not all of them, school shootings, I was in a school shooting when I was a kid, it wasn't on the news, nobody gave a shit, we're just a bunch of little black kids on the south side of Chicago getting shot at by other little black kids on the south side of Chicago, same place Barack Obama came from, and it's the exact, it's probably worse now, my, my, I had a cousin, got shot and killed, same area, same neighborhood, Right? If we go if you go look at the, the the statistics for the south side of Chicago, you'd be shocked, man. More people die there every year than than dude, man. And that's not that's just one that's one city. We think we're talking about Baltimore, New York, Los Angeles, Compton, like all black communities where where this stuff is happening every day and nobody says it. It's not on the news. You don't turn on Fox News and see people talking about this. And I'm not saying that like society doesn't care because because it's black people or, or or people who live in the ghetto or poor people or whatever. But maybe it is. I don't know. But at the same time, we listen to what these people are telling us, right? They're promising us stuff, and they're, they're telling us the world is going to end, but they're going to fix it somehow. And look, they're not going to fix it. It's not going to change. The jobs the jobs didn't didn't go away because of 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 government or because of greedy business of business practices the jobs went away because of people following people who were telling them that they were going to give them something whether it be following it following an employer hey stick with me join 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 our join our company family and, and give 20 years of your life to us until we decide to send all of all of our production to mexico and leave you here in detroit in a city that's dilapidated and destroyed. We gave them that power team. We gave them that power. And we gave them that power because we listened to each other say, hey, right, go out, get a job, follow this path. The thing you were meant to do, right, and I'm not talking about passion. Some people, it's not, I'm not talking about passion team. I'm talking about the thing that you just do. Like I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like, software development for software development's sake it's an addiction man i'm addicted to this stuff it's like crack for whatever reason and it frustrates me it's all confusing it's hard to learn but for whatever reason i cannot stop it's been impossible for me for my entire life the same thing with self-help and productivity books and this this quest to figure out what success means and I, maybe I haven't figured it out yet, but I know a part of the equation is figuring out who you are and then working for yourself. And it doesn't have to be like some big grandiose gesture. And you don't need another school or another boot camp or another class. This is the 21st century. We all have computers. We all have smartphones. All you have to do is look for the information and do a little bit every day. And I'm making this video because I failed to do that. Now, I'm here where I am now, like I've got the subscribers in the YouTube channel, I've got people in my online, in my online learn to code course, it's not a boot camp, it just, it just walks people through the fundamentals that everybody else misses when it comes to the thing that I'm interested in, like school, maybe one day I'll make a school that walks people through the fundamentals of the fact that you don't need to have a job to be successful. You just need to figure out exactly what success is for you. And once you get to that one place that you deem to be successful, you will know, you'll have the confidence to know that you can get to that next place, team. So anyway, I'm out of here. Figure out who you are. I'll see you in the next video. Maybe we'll have some fun then too.